Hello and welcome to another episode of Leaders of Transformation. Today we're going to talk about podcasting and specifically getting on podcast where you can be in front of your ideal client. Our guest is Tom Schwab and he is an author, he's a speaker, a teacher, and most specifically what we're going to be talking about today is he's a podcast interview marketing pioneer. Um, he has actually translated his marketing expertise into this leading edge technology and, uh, and he's going to talk today about why it's so important to get on podcasts, but also getting on the right podcasts. And so Tom, welcome to Leader Transformation. We're excited that you're here today. Nicole, I am thrilled to be here. Uh, I got to say, it's it's great to talk with you, but it's weird to hear you. Uh, most of the time, I listen to the podcast at 2x speed while I'm running at half x speed. Uh, so you just sound different now. So I have to talk really fast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I can keep that up for a while. But, um, but you know what? For those of you that are listening, if you like some of the guests that have been on this show, you can thank Tom and his team for that because Interview Valet has been sending me amazing guests for this show. And I'm just so grateful, Tom, for you doing that because it just up levels the, uh, the quality of, of guests that we have on this show. And uh, so we really appreciate that. And um, let me give our listeners just a little bit of, I'll brag on you so that you don't have to do so much bragging on yourself. So Tom Schwab knows how to build an online business. He has done it successfully several times and now helps others find online success with podcast interview marketing. Marketing at its heart is starting a conversation with somebody who would be an ideal customer. And uh, Tom helps thought leaders who, you know, coaches, authors, speakers, consultants, and emerging brands uh, get featured on leading podcasts with their ideal prospects already that are already listening that they're already listening to. The interview valet system, which I already alluded to, his company uh, helps them turn their listeners into customers. He is the author of Podcast Guests Profits: um, Grow Your Business with a Targeted Interview Strategy. So, and he is the CEO of Interview Valet, that company that I was mentioning. So, again, Tom, we're really excited to have you here. Let's talk podcasting. It's, I mean, it's exploded. There are so many podcasts out there right now. There's a lot of noise. So how do you get, uh, how do you differentiate yourself? How do you, how do you get in front of the right audience and, uh, and get known? Yeah, and that's really the, the heart of it, Nicole. And I always say CEO stands for Chief Evangelist Officer. And I really believe that what we're talking about today, that podcast interview marketing, um, is going to be as common as Facebook marketing or email marketing in five years. And it's really, you know, getting in front of the right people. Um, people talk today about how do you break through the noise? Well, I'm sorry, we're just adding to the noise most of the time. You know, if, if GM has a budget and Procter and & Gamble and Apple have a budget, I am not going to be able to break through that. You know, it's almost like going to a concert and yelling. Um, you, you, you may be adding to the noise. You may get hoarse, but you're not getting um, listened to. So I think the big thing is in, in any medium you go to, try to get in on the conversation so that you're not distracted by other things and make sure that you're talking to the right people. So yeah, today there are over 400,000 podcasts out there. Wow. That's crazy. But, but you look at yeah. the number of blogs, you know, we, yeah, uh, uh, when, when we went from three television stations to probably 10 television stations, people said, oh, there's too much noise. And now, you know, it went to 100. Now everybody can get their own television station. So it's not yeah. being on the biggest one. It's being on the one that your ideal listeners are there for. You know, there's a, yeah. a sport called pickleball. I should know more about it. But uh, somebody told me there's eight podcasts that are dedicated to pickleball. Now, if you're the best pickleball coach or manufacturer of equipment, those are your best podcasts there. So don't worry about, you know, um, the biggest podcasts or getting on all 400,000. No, just really target those. And I think, you know, today, as we have more and more access to customers, you know, it used to be that our customers were 10 miles driving range from us. Now it's, we've got access to billions of customers. It's not necessarily talking to all of them. It's just talking to those, you know, thousand true fans uh, that could be great customers uh, because all of the studies show that your ideal customers 
will make you happy. You'll make them happy. Uh, they'll be more profitable, more lifetime customers, and they'll bring you more customers. So I think more today, more than ever, it's become more of a focus thing with marketing uh, than just to spray and pray. Well, yeah, spray and pray. That's a great example. I've done that. You know, it's like throw mud against the wall and see how much, you know, uh, lands or sticks. And it's like, no, you just get a muddy wall when you do that. But, um, you know, in what you're talking about, yeah, it, it's a great point. Pickleball, where there's eight podcasts, just focus on those eight versus the 400,000. What I'm seeing, yeah, is there's, there's, um, there's a lot of noise and I'm a big believer in cutting out the noise and eliminating, you know, just being so people can actually focus in and be quiet and not be so overwhelmed. Because I think right now people are being so overwhelmed with information. So this go, this applies also to listeners to find the shows that are of interest and just focus in on them rather than trying to consume everything on the, you know, on the, uh, on the buffet table, just pick the things that are really important to you. So it goes both ways. And what a great marriage. And that's what you do is you create this great marriage between the two of them. Now, give us a little bit of, uh, you know, we'll go into some more detail as to how do you do that and strategy. But uh, before we do that, give us a little bit of your background. You mentioned about, um, you know, you having a background in marketing and, and then now parlaying that into the podcasting world. So tell us a little bit about that journey of yours. Yeah. It actually starts further back than that. You know, my first job out of college was running nuclear power plants in the Navy. So to anybody okay. in the U.S., thank you for paying my education. I uh, went to the U.S. Naval Academy and then ran uh, nuclear power plants on an aircraft carrier. Wow. And one of the things that that taught me, yeah, people say, wow. And it's like, wow is the people that designed that system so that people in their 20s can run nuclear power plants. It's a system, it's a procedure. Um, and that's really what it, something it taught me really early on in life is that everything can be systematized, it can be learned, it can be refined. It shouldn't be magic or art every time. So when I got into sales and marketing um, after leaving the Navy, um, I was always amazed when people would say, yeah, 50% of the money we, we spend is wasted. We just don't know what 50% it is. And that just blew my mind. So as I was starting a company uh, in 2008, I had read a book uh, by two smart guys out of MIT. Uh, it was called Inbound Marketing by Darmesh Shah and Brian Halligan. They went on to uh, found HubSpot, which is now what, like a $6 billion market cap company. And one of the things they talked about was using content to attract, engage, and delight. And so we were one of their first e-commerce case studies. Uh, and back then, content meant blogs. And so after I built that company up and sold it off, I was helping some other people. Um, and one of the things I saw is that blogs just weren't working nearly as well as they used to. And, you know, they never worked that well. But one of the hacks we always used was getting guest blogs, right? So instead of me blogging on my site, having it seen by three people, one of them being my mom, you know, why don't we put this on? you know, um, Washington Post or Wall Street Journal or the Huffington Post, someplace where the ideal customers are so that you can get that know, like, trust and drive that traffic back. So we started to do that with podcast interviews and we're just amazed by the results with it. And so then over the next year, we started to test it and refine it. So what we're talking about here in, in podcast interview marketing is nothing revolutionary. It's really evolutionary. Is taking the, the content marketing um, and inbound marketing strategies and how do you apply those to a new medium? How do you use those in podcast interviews in order to get in front of your ideal audience? You know, get the know, like, and trust and then move them from being just passive listeners to active visitors and ultimately engaged leads. So uh, to me, it's, it's more of a process. It's not art. It's not science. Or excuse me, it's not art or it's not magic. You know, there's a scientific process uh, to do this. You know, it's interesting because I – because I, I host my show, I uh, get to meet a lot of guests, people who want to be on the shows. I also get to meet a lot of podcast hosts because I'm on their show or whatever. We're just talking podcasting. And uh, this will be a great opportunity for you to, to weigh on, in on this is that I have heard recently, especially people saying, I've been on a lot of podcasts as guests and I've not gotten any business from it. 
I've also mm-hmm. heard podcast hosts say, I've done a lot of podcasting and I'm almost considering uh, throwing in the towel because I'm not generating clients from the, you know, for all the work that I'm putting in. So can you speak to that? Sure. So I, as an engineer, I always look at return on investment is how much you get out for how much you put in. Right. Right. So that's one of the reasons people say, you know, why don't I have a podcast? Honestly, Nicole, doing a podcast is a lot of work. You know, anybody that says really easy. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. uh, Yeah, (laughs) it is. I'm just joking. (laughs) No, but everybody looks at that and goes, oh, that's, that's fun. I would like to do that. What they don't realize is that the great ones make it look easy. You know, it's like playing football. I want to play football for a couple hours on a Sunday afternoon. That looks like a great job, but there's a lot of work that goes into that. So from my perspective, the return on investment, if you want to get more out and put less in, it's almost easier to be a guest than a host. That being said, um, you can build up your own authority by being a, a host. So I don't think it's an either or. But we hear a lot of people, too, that say, well, you know, I tried a bunch of interviews, um, but they didn't work. Or I tried a podcast, but, you know, I didn't get rich and famous um, overnight from it. And really, you have to look at what's the business model behind it. And especially for being a guest, some of our best clients have come to us and said, you know, I've done a dozen interviews and never saw anything from it. And when we listen to their interviews and talk to them about it, it's like, you were missing a bunch of parts to it, right? That's like saying I baked a cake and it didn't turn out. Well, you forgot two or three of the ingredients or I built a car and it didn't work. Well, you forgot the transmission and, you know, the drive shaft or something, you know, you are just missing parts to that. So one of the things that we've seen, and after our first hundred clients, we said, how come some people get, you know, good results with podcast interviews and other ones get great results? And it really boiled down to three things and they tended to multiply on themselves. So the message, the market and the machine. So the message was, Mm -hmm. do you have stories to tell and not just a product to sell? I mean, if you go on to a podcast and try using it like an infomercial, um, it won't work. And the host may just lose that recording because that's not what the medium is all about, right? You've got to have stories with that. And one of the things, uh, my favorite quote out, or favorite tweet out there is from a guy by the name of Rand Fishkin. Rand started a company called uh, SEO Moz, now it's called Moz. And he said, the best way to sell something today is not to sell anything, but to earn the awareness, trust, and respect of those who might buy. So that message is so important. The second thing is the market. So when people say, well, I just, I want to talk to everybody. Well, not everybody wants to hear you, right? Um, So from that standpoint, podcast results come from being very targeted. The other thing about the market uh, segment there is how are you going to help these people? We had some people that said, well, I just, I want to build my brand. Well, first of all, I can't figure out how you calculate the ROI from building my brand, but also how does that help the host? How does that help the listener? Um, It's all about you. So if you don't have that market piece, that's not going to work. And then finally, there's the machine. And today when you hear somebody online, you hear about them, what's the first thing you do? You check out their website and check out their social media. If that doesn't support you as an expert, um, you can go on all the podcasts you want, but people look and say, this person is in the witness protection plan, or they look like they've got a website that was built in the, um, uh, the 1990s, you know, uh, it doesn't build trust. So we always look at with, you know, people that come to us and say, Hey, we want to work with you. We'll do an evaluation of their message, their market and their machine. And we can predict, are you going to have success with this? You know, another thing we found with the testing that I'm really big about testing is that, um, you know, we've all got opinions, but what do the experts say? What do the customers say? And one of the things we found is that you need to give people three calls to action to move them from being just a passive listener to an active visitor. You know, give them a small way to say yes, uh, a medium way, and then the heck yes. And I know digital marketers will always say, no, one call to action. And that's totally true for a landing page or digital marketing. But as we've tested this, three calls to action always do best. And as we talk to people that were more or less like selling from the stage, 
they're like, oh yeah, you've got to meet people where they are. Um, there's a great book out there uh, from um, Bill Troy. It's called Clicksand, How Digital Marketing is Ruining Your Business. And I love how he says that big fish don't swim through funnels and whales don't click. So this idea of going on a podcast, if somebody, you know, loves what they hear, they, they love what they hear from Nicole and they're like, yeah, she understands me. She can help me. I want to work with her. Well, let them speak to the wizard. Let them get through there. Don't make them go through four months of nurturing emails and a tripwire and all the rest of that. Um, uh, so some of those best practices, I think if you learn and, and learn what works for other people, you can get better results uh, from being both a podcast guest and a podcast host. Oh, I love that. And, and what you said just resonated so much because um, as a business coach working with business owners, yeah, I find that my clients are not interested in going through that that process, they're like, yes or no. Yeah, I'm in, you know, let's talk. They want to get on, they want to get on a conversation with me. You get on the phone and so forth. Now you talk about three calls to action. Give us some examples in the podcast space, right? So if like mm -hmm. a, uh, a guest is on the show, let's do that. And um, what, what could they, what could be a small, medium, large, or however you uh, sure. approach so those three. Yeah. So, so with that, let's, let's use you as an example, as a, as a business coach, right? Sure. So that small one is just a reason for them to go back to your website. Um, something to engage them, something that you could talk about that doesn't um, take a lot of time. But so download? Is something, like one of those opt-ins? Uh, 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 down, like, okay. uh, yeah, download. Like, so like a PDF, you know, the six steps to do this, um, eight questions to see if your business is ready for this just something to keep that conversation going. Like for me, I often use the nine secrets to get on your first podcast, right? I could list those all out, but chances are they're not going to remember them. They're doing a lot of things. So it's just a quick win. The yeah. next one, that medium is like, yeah, I'm not ready to jump on a phone call yet, but what's the medium? Uh, it could be a free book. It could be a video. Um, we've tested it and trainings always convert better than the word webinar. So if you've got a free, you know, 30 minute training, and that's really important, especially if it was a uh, audio only podcast, because if they've only seen or they've only heard you, um, what's the next thing in the relationship? The relationship is seeing you. So that face to camera is really important to move that along. And then the big one, um, especially for like, uh, you know, coaching, consulting, a lifetime value there is they want to talk with the wizard. They've heard you for 30 or 45 minutes. It's not to the point where they're going to go to the website and click and put their PayPal account in to make that kind of one, nor do, would you want them because you need to, to interview them. Yeah. But, but for a coach that of, Hey, here, jump on a, uh, a time on my calendar. Let's talk. Um, let's see if I could help you. So you get that small, medium and large. Yes. Uh, and that's worked really well for our clients. Fantastic. Oh, this is, this is gold for people that are listening, trying to figure out how to make this work. This is gold. Now on the other side for hosts, what can they do to, uh, to make their podcast more effective? Uh, just even as a, as a host, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, cause they want to, cause most, most people who are starting a podcast, there's a lot of hobbyists and they just want to talk about a subject pickleball or whatever the case is. Right. But in this case, ones that are looking to grow a business through it. Yeah. And so from that standpoint, I always say, start with what's the business model? What's the revenue source? And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to sell, you know, advertising. Um, I'm going to get Audible as a sponsor. That's a really hard row uh, to hoe there, right? You've got to get a whole lot of downloads before Audible is going to choose you over this American life. So try to find something that applies to your, um, your audience. Like if, Pickleball again, I don't care if you've got a thousand downloads. If you can go to a pickleball manufacturer and say, hey, do you want to advertise on my show? They would probably say yes. Um, so really focusing on that. And really as a host, I think the best advertiser you can have is yourself. So if the audience is listening to you, they trust you, um, either talk about products that you use um, that you could get some kind of affiliate deal with or services that you offer. 
uh, you know, to, to your listeners, you're the famous person. And it sort of reminds me of uh, like, I grew up in a small town and the small, you know, the weatherman, he was like the celebrity. He went to all the schools. Everybody knew him uh, and everybody wanted to meet him. So I've seen a lot of podcast um, hosts, you know, do meetups when they're in different towns. People will come there. They'll do masterminds. They'll do groups because, you know, you're a celebrity to them. They trust you. Um, and then also just from the, the standpoint of, are you doing this for passion? So if I'm talking about, you know, pickleball because I love it, um, okay, that's a passion project there. Or is there something that I can, you know, focus more on the business side of it um, that I could use and use this as a marketing aspect to my business to be seen as the thought leader, to interview people that may not, um, that I may not be able to talk to all the time. Right. So uh, Seth Godin, if I call up Seth Godin and say, hey, uh, I would love to talk to you for a half hour. You know, could you clear some time on your calendar? Seth's a great guy. I've met him in real life. He, he's a true, true gentleman. But I don't think he's going to come back to me and say, sure, I would love to give up a, to a half hour of time that I could spend with my family and talk with you. But if you've got a podcast and he's releasing a book at that time, he may say, yes, I would love to talk to you and your audience. So from that standpoint, um, look and see how you could build those relationships. Uh, you know, today more than ever, I think, you know, the, the richness of our lives is the richness of our relationships. And there is no better way to do that than being a podcast host and inviting people on your show. Now, I've seen some podcast hosts that say, here are my 52 ideal customers, these target customers that I would love to work with. And these are the next 52 guests I'm going to, to uh, uh, invite there. You know, if you reached out to him, to the CEO of that company and say, could I do a 30-minute a sales call with you? They would say no. But if it's like, hey, I would love to feature you in front of my audience and asking them the questions, getting to know them, uh, boy, that's, that, that's a better way to do it. And, you know, um, Gary Vaynerchuk wrote that book. Um, jab, 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 right hook. And I might've missed a couple jabs in there. Uh, I was looking at this give, 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 ask, you know, from that standpoint, um, if you keep giving, people will ask, how can they work with you? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that is actually really, really great. And I've got some ideas of just even listening to you thinking, Oh, I can do this. I can do that. And, and what's interesting is people have asked me oftentimes other hosts um, have asked me, what is the, what is the benefit? Have I gotten clients out of my uh, podcast and so forth? And yes, I have. But the, the greatest benefit is what you just touched on is the people that I get to connect with the guests themselves, having them on the show. We wouldn't be having this conversation if I didn't have a podcast. Um, we wouldn't have met, you know, right. and there's so many people. I, I look at the people now that I hang around with that I talk to on a regular basis. And it's because I had that pod, I have a podcast. I knew a lot of people before and they're amazing people too. It just happens to be because I have a podcast. I've had certain people on my show. And they've introduced me to their friends and their friends and their friends. So what a great strategy uh, to actually bring your ideal clients on the podcast. And that's something that I've been doing. And it's been, it's been fantastic, not from an ulterior, but just in a sense of saying, Hey, this is somebody that I really, I like, I want to, you know, I want to work with and I love what they're doing. So for me, I'm looking at it, people who love what they do. They're passionate. They're, they're a leader of transformation and, and I believe in what they're doing. And uh, so, yeah, really, really great. So you mentioned earlier about blogs now and getting on Huffing, you know, getting Huffington Post or Inc. or all these. How do you see the two working together it's rather than being an either or conversation, right? Podcasting, mm -hmm. blogging, writing articles. How do you see them? Or do you have clients that actually uh, – incorporate those strategies effectively we've got clients and and i've used this right and i think the amazing thing today is that content can be created whichever way is easiest for the creator and consumed however it's easiest for the customer right and it's it's so easy so for me writing a blog is like a homework assignment i'd rather clean my office or go to the dentist than write a blog me too. But talking <laughs> is easy, right? It's fun. Yeah. So 
we could take this um, this interview here and we could run it through a service like rev.com or temi.com and for 10 cents a minute, get it transcribed. So for $4, get it transcribed. There's probably five or six blogs in here that somebody could take, clean up, or even just start it as a, as a draft from there. You know, um, we've got the video going, so uh, you can go ahead and put it on YouTube or Facebook. Now, is that a podcast still? Yeah. Well, it's in a d different format. Um, you know, amazing part is, is 10% of the U.S. population is still hearing impaired. So that transcript, there are going to be people that read that. And, you know, you just don't want to say no to 10% of the U.S. population out there. Um, you know, I could, if I talk long enough, I can get 140 characters of wisdom. Well, that's a tweet right there. So just going through and, and highlighting that, making memes out of it, it's just so easy to do that. And I think you're right. It's not a, a one-trick pony. It's not that I'm a podcaster and that's all I do, or I'm a blogger and that's all I do. It's so easy to repurpose it. And they work so well together, right? So putting the transcript below the video is going to help the search engine because they're going to see all that rich content there because they can't currently can't search the, the video. Um, so that's going to help them. And even when people post at other places, you know, one of the great things that most people underestimate is the power of podcasts and podcast interviews. Because every time somebody links back to it, they're linking back to your site. Or if you're a guest on somebody else's podcast, we've got some clients that are doing podcast guesting just as an SEO strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. Think about it. That's, that's a signal that Google always uses as quality backlinks. Now, uh, would I go on the podcast for Kalamazoo Valley Community College um, if they had a podcast? If it was an EDU backlink, you bet you, you bet I would, right? Because that's such a solid link. Or a podcast, the government's got some, like on selling to the government and small business. That's a .gov backlink. That is gold. So just being on that podcast, that backlink can be so, so powerful. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay. So I have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, I hadn't really thought about the, the EDU and the, the GOV. That's, that's very interesting. So let's talk about how do you get on the best shows. There's so many people now wanting to be podcast guests. There's lots of shows and you want to focus in. We get that. And let's say, for example, as a business coach, there's a lot of business coaches and there's a lot of entrepreneur shows. How do you so get on that, that? How do you get on those best the best shows? All right. So with this, put yourself in the host place, right? Who does the host want to interview? Their friends and people that they'd like to be their friends. So starting with a cold pitch is the worst way to do it, right? Nobody likes a, a, a cold call or a robo call. So the first thing is to find the right podcast. So find a podcast where you could add value to it. Remember how I said, give, 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 ask. Well, your goal on being on the podcast is to make the host look like a genius for having you on there and introducing you to the audience. So target five or 10 podcasts and not the biggest podcast, but the most focused ones. And the first thing to do is listen to them. So listen to the podcast, leave a rating and a review. I don't care what the podcast is. If you leave a rating and review, the host will know and will read that rating and review. Then share it a few times, you know, share it on social media, make a comment. Um, after you've done that and you've earned the right, now reach out to them, it, be it by email, be it by uh, social media, and just say, hey, I've listened to the podcast. I really liked this guest. Uh, I really learned a lot from here. I've got something that I think could help your audience. Um, make it brief, make it to the point, add some supporting links, links back to your website, to your LinkedIn profile. If you've got a one page sort of summary, that's important too. And so make it easy for the host to say yes to you as a guest. If you've been on a podcast before, put a link to that so they can at least see that, okay, they know what they're doing there. And you know, just don't assume that uh, they'll respond right away, they're busy. So maybe follow up with them. 
But the whole idea is how can you serve them? And the, the biggest mistake I see most people making is with a shotgun approach. And they'll hire a VA, they'll buy a list, and they'll send it out to all the podcasts. And they'll, they'll say, um, uh, you know, uh, dear Nicole, and the name could be misspelled, right? However, it was in the list. Um, I, I've really loved your podcast, and I would love to be on there to talk about pickleball. And you're like, this has nothing to do. They have never listened to this. Uh, I, I get pitched probably on average one to two times a day to be on my podcast. And I don't have a podcast, but I'm on somebody's list someplace. And they all start <laughs> the same way. You know, uh, uh, dear Tom, uh, I've listened to your podcast and I love it. I would love to be a guest on the podcast. And then they start going into that. And it's like, you know, if you're going to lie to me, tell me I'm pretty. Just don't tell me that I got a great podcast. So from that <laughs> that's standpoint, funny. that's the way to get on there. And I always say the, the first podcast, those are the toughest. And like I said, I've got a, a download the nine secrets of getting on your first podcast. The first podcasts are the, the toughest ones, but then afterwards, just do a good job, right? Bring value. And at the end, if you've done a good job, you don't have to promote yourself. The host will promote you. Uh, uh, the the um, host of Nice Guys on Business, Doug Sandler, I loved his quote one time in front of a, a big audience. He says, never promote yourself on a podcast. If you do a good job, the host will promote you. Um, and then at the end, you know, if ask them how you can help them. Are there any other guests that I could introduce you to that you would like on your show? And most of the time, they will follow up and say, if you did a good job, what kind of podcast would you like to be on? Who could I introduce you to? And really, that's a powerful strategy because the podcasting community is still very inbred. Podcasters know podcasters. And the quickest way to get on that next podcast is to do a good job on the first one. And if that host introduces you to two more after that, your dance card will be filled really quickly. Tom, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so many nuggets here. I'm definitely going to go back and listen to this and, and make notes and, and brilliant, brilliant. You can tell that you definitely know what you're talking about here. And, and this is, this is your, your, this is your life's work. Your at least for now, who knows what happens 10 to 20 <laughs> years from now and things change. And there's a new media platform and you're going to own that as well. So uh, we just really appreciate it. You mentioned about uh, a free download. And so maybe tell us about the uh, gift that you've got for our audience. Sure. And so this, pay attention here because this is pulling behind the curtain too. This is part of the strategy, right? We talked about those three offers, the small yes, the medium yes, and the heck yes. You don't just want to send people to a homepage because that homepage is going to change with time. We're talking here in 2018. There is somebody right now in 2020 listening to this for the first time. And if I say, just go to the homepage at Interview Valet, it's probably going to change. And if they're just listening to it, they have no idea what I look like. They have no idea what the website looks like. So always direct them to a dedicated page. So for this, I'll make the dedicated page at interviewvalet.com forward slash LOT. So for, um, for the podcast, the Leaders of Transformation. And when you go to that page, I'll tell you what you're going to see. You're going to see a picture of Nicole, right? Because she's the person that you know. She's the host. You're going to see the picture of the uh, podcast, right? Because that's sort of that trust seal. Then there's going to be some, some verbiage there. And then the three offers that I'd like to make is that small yes. And I talked about that before, right? That, that checklist, the, the, nine, the nine things to get on your first podcast, the secrets, so that's there. That's the small yes. The medium yes, well, I'm going to put two small ones. The other one is a checklist. I'm a big checklist guy. I'd rather learn from other people's mistakes. So the checklist that we use with all of our clients will be there. The medium yes is that book that Nicole talked about. Podcast guest profits, how to grow your business with targeted podcast interviews. Free download of that right there. And this goes into the this whole strategy. Then the big yes is, hey, if anything of this resonated with you, if you're like, I could use this, I could use this as a podcast, or I could use it 
for a virtual book tour or to fill my funnel or maybe you like the idea of that S, uh, SEO strategy. Well, I'll put my calendar link right there so you can jump on my calendar. We can talk about this. We can look at your message, your market machine, see how you could use podcast interview marketing if you could do it yourself or how we could help you. So just go to interviewvalet.com forward slash L-O-T for Leaders of Transformation and all those things will be there. Fantastic. Tom, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just really excited to share this uh, interview with everyone so that they can uh, learn from this. This is brilliant stuff. So um, I, I always encourage my guests as well to take action because you know you can learn about this stuff. You can hear about it and say, oh, that's so interesting. Lots of podcasts out there you can hear with great information, but definitely I encourage everyone, you know, take action, go to that uh, you know, web link. We'll make sure it's on Leaders of Transformation uh, in the show notes so that you can find it there. Um, but go and, you know, check this out. Find out what Tom is doing. Take action on it. Just even if it's one thing that he said, you know, that you start to apply, you know, at least even just that one thing and apply it today. Like I've, I've taken away a bunch of things that I've got. I'm going to go th back through this and list out you know, what I'm actually going to do. There's probably 10 things <laughs> that I'm going to want to do <laughs> and make tweaks on, you know, as a guest on other podcasts and also as a host that I'm going to do. But you know what? For me just to think, oh, that's really cool. Nothing's going to happen. It's only when I go through that a list and start applying them in my life. That's when transformation happens. And so I encourage you to do that today. Connect with Tom. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's been extraordinarily successful. And, uh, and I, just, I just encourage you to uh, get connected with him. So Tom, thank you so much. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in today. And um, I'm, I just, I'd love to hear your stories. So find us on Facebook, find us on uh, our website, send us a message. Tell us, you know, okay, I, I did this. Tom mentioned, you know, do this and this and this. I did it. Here's what happened. Now my, my guesting has been so much more effective as I'm on podcasts or as a host. Now I'm starting to get traction. I want to hear those stories. Uh, and I'm sure that Tom wants to hear them as well. So please do share them with us. And if you liked this podcast, you know, in this episode, please go on iTunes, uh, Tom mentioned it, leave us a rating and review. I do read those and they make a huge difference in terms of us being able to have a greater reach, be able to impact more people around the world. And so we appreciate your support in doing that. And again, thank you for being here. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Leaders of Transformation real soon.